Hey everyone, welcome to the Idiomatic Top 3! With Nicholas, I am the gaming correspondent for uh, Idiomatic. And I am Dimitri, Editor-in-Chief of Idiomatic and Movie Critic. Um, so we're going to do underrated games that people might have missed, although that proved really difficult when we were preparing the episode, because we realized that uh, nostalgic critics uh, over the internet rate everything very highly, which is why we're going to focus on old-school video games back when I still played them. Yes. Saying that you're not a gamer and me looking at the GameCube on the floor there, uh, kind of funny. <laughs> Yes, well, Mario Party doesn't count. Well, yeah, okay, you, you need to have played the thing before you... <laughs> yeah, that also limited my choices, by the way. <laughs> uh, but let's talk a little bit about what makes an old-school video game, because like, unlike new games, which, you know, they can last 60 hours and whatnot, old, old games, 16-bit era and 8-bit era, they, you can't really do that. They just didn't have the memory power to do that. Yeah. If they lasted long, because if they were an adventure game, they had puzzles to solve, and, mm -hmm. you know, if you, if you knew the puzzle, you could finish the game in maybe, like, Five ten hours, but if you didn't do them, those, those games lasted you months because there was no internet to find. You know, oh, I'm stuck here. What do, what do I do? You have to figure it out. That's true. No gamefacts.com back then. Exactly. But you did have the Nintendo Power magazine. Yes, unless you own a Sega, and then you're like, oh man, I'm stuck. But nobody owns a Sega, so yeah. exactly. <laughs> you don't need to play the game to look at your Sega and go, oh man, I'm stuck. Yeah. <laughs> um. And I, you know, it's a good point. And, and the thing with, I think, I think because the, the, the gameplay was sort of short, the only way to stretch the entertainment value, value was to make things difficult, but you couldn't make them too difficult, otherwise people couldn't solve it. It's, I think one of the key things to make a good old school video game is really the adjusted difficulty level. It can't be too hard, can't be too easy. And I think all the games that I really love have that, 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 that difficulty level that starts off really easy gets a little bit more difficult in the middle, and then gets easy again for some reason. Well, easy again. Like, do you have an example of that? Super Mario World, I think, is a great example of that, where it gets, it starts off really easy, and then when you discover, like, around the, the, the chocolate cave or whatever, it, it starts getting really difficult, especially yeah. on the bridge. And then once you're past that, it's, you know, you have all the, you have the cape, you have the fire flower and everything, it's sort of just a breeze after that. That's a good point, yeah. And... Yeah, other games like that, like Mega Man, which is a series I loved, where every time you kill the boss, you, you get his powers. So at the beginning, you only have your gun, and you're, you're trying to shoot with your, your arm gun. And then you beat a boss or two, and so forth, and you get their powers, so you get more and more you know weapons you can use. And eventually, you have all the weapons, so you're fighting, you're fighting a new boss, and you're trying, oh, maybe my gun's not doing enough damage, I'll switch to this one. And you try it, and oh, it doesn't work, I'll switch to this one. So eventually, you have so much choice, and eventually, you find you know, the good gun, and it gets easy. So you have, you have all the weapons you can do to, to kill a boss. But, I mean, I guess it's not the difficulty that drops, it's just that you, you, your character gets you know more powerful. So it is, uh, it's a way of making it easier towards the end. The Zelda, the original Zelda as well. Yeah. You start with like three little hearts and one sword and a crappy shield, and you get all those weapons. And the sword is shorter too; it doesn't even have a good reach. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> and you can only shoot your sword when you're at full life. So uh, it, you could last so long when you're at full life, but the, <clears throat> you lose like a half of a heart, and all of a sudden your life plummets because you have to get close to the enemies <laughs> to kill them. But eventually, you get all those weapons, so you get like a bow and an arrow, so you can just shoot the enemies and farm far away. And it gets like a lot easier and uh, actually more fun towards the end when you have your year a lot more powerful. Yeah, no, it's 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 a weird thing where it it doesn't get more fun when it gets more difficult. The, it gets more fun when you you just get that feeling of like I'm a badass and I control this world without any effort. You know? Yes, yes. Another example of that: the original Final Fantasy. Um, you're weakling at the end, at the beginning, but you know you, you level up and you don't have you have a, a goal to do, but you know you don't have a time limit or whatever, so you get more and more powerful. And eventually, you're like you're walking through and you're you know killing people very easily, and it gets it gets more fun because yeah, I like this feeling of yeah I'm a badass now. What do we do about it? <laughs> yeah. No, me too. I mean, as a kid, I remember like Final Fantasy specifically. I would just run around the forest, just meeting lame enemies, just to le level up without really any effort, because I am that cheap a player. 
<laughs> I am killing boars in the forest, like uh, like uh, Cartman in South Park. Exactly. I don't mind killing boars in the forest for two hours if it means that the next dungeon I have to face, I can just breeze through <laughs> in like five minutes and just laugh at the enemies saying like, oh, really? You're going to try and kill me now? Alone? <laughs> Do they ever talk back? Uh-huh. No. The enemies, no? no? Okay. Oh, good. And, and my father yeah. thought it was crazy talking to the TV as well. Like, you know, it was just... <laughs> I was just worried for you for a second there. <laughs> the other thing I think is really important is reactive controls. I, I find if if there's a del- especially like the old games, they have that problem often. Like there's a delay between you pushing the button and the guy jumping or whatever. That kills it for me right away every time. A lot of that is also sometimes due to the the animation. You want you want you want to jump, so they they make this nice animation. The guy crouching and taking the effort, but he's not jumping in that time. They're doing the animation. So mm. what the hell? And reactive as well when you have you're, you're trying to have a platformer and for some reason they make the slippery platforms for oh, no reason. Yeah, I mean not not because you're in the ice world in Mario that's fine you know slippery because it's ice that's fine but just every platform is slippery because you're maybe they're conserving momentum or something and you you jump on the platform and you, you have to tap the button on your side like a bunch of times to stop and it's just really annoying. Oh, that's true. Slippery is not uh, Yeah, it's all about the controls because you have nothing else going in the game for you. So if you don't have the controls, it's like, why am I playing this shit? Yeah. Poop. Yeah. <laughs> and going on controls, I like I like simple controls. Honestly, I started getting worried when Nintendo kept adding more and more and more buttons to their controllers because I'm not a like twenty buttons kind of guy, really. Um, you know, one for jump and one for attack. That's plenty fun for me. And you can always compensate for that, like in Mega Man, one for jump, one for attack. You want you have special weapons, you go in a special screen, and then you switch your weapons and you fire that new weapon now. I don't want ha- I don't have to you know, have to press down select an A to be able to shoot a special shot. Mm. That's just very, very annoying. Yeah, I agree. Actually, back in the day, there were we we kept making that joke with Nintendo adding more buttons like that. I think the sixty four Nintendo sixty four had like like four shoulder buttons, one Z button under it, and like two, two uh, like one analog stick, one cross, and whatever. Yeah. And then we kept making that joke that it eventually it was all going to be like one sphere, <laughs> where you have like both hands with every finger on something, you know. Yeah. And then Nintendo released the Wii, and it's like the complete opposite. It's like, oh no, we just removed every effing button out there. It's like, you use one button now. <laughs> yeah. That's that's a good move, actually. It's a good move, because you know, just looking at those remotes with like all the analog sticks, all you have to use, you know, left analog stick to, to aim and the other analog stick to move. They're like, I, I can't do that, honestly, really. <laughs> Maybe if you have, you know, somebody else sharing the controller, I'll aim and you move, and, you know... I just think you remember playing games that way, by the way. <laughs> and finally, I want a sense of purpose, man. Like, this is a difference for me. But, like, this is why Nintendo was a, a revolution, yeah. as opposed to, you know, uh, ColecoVision or Atari. Is that, the, the you know, there's an ending. You know, oh. you, you reach a point and it's like the, 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 the story it ends, the game ends, and you're like, I win, I rock. As opposed to just doing it until the the game rapes you, pretty much. A high score for you is not a purpose enough. No, really not. Writing a little number at the end of the book, uh, you know, the Nintendo book saying, I got this high score, it's not, not good enough for you. <laughs> it's, true, it's true, that's their imitation of the arcade, wasn't it? Yeah, but I guess the home, home consoles, you know, got that. Because when you only had the arcade, the point was to make the game harder and harder so that, you know, you wouldn't play there forever and the game would actually kill you. Yeah. But yeah, now with the home consoles and, you know, you want a sense of purpose is something good that, you know, hey, I beat the game, all right, time to go outside and play or put another game in, whatever. Uh, That's because I tend not to stop until somebody tells me to stop uh, when, I, when I was a kid and playing video games. Even when I got bored, it's sort of like, but it's going on and I still have lives, you know? Yeah. And, and you know, you're like, but I've played that same Donkey Kong stage like 17 times at this point. Yeah, even... I had this thing, even if the game was bad, you know, I had to finish it, you know, you have to see the ending or something, even though now you know it's only going to be a stupid congratulations screen. Um, you have to finish it, and if the game's bad, well, it's probably something wrong with me, because Nintendo would never come out with a bad game and, you know, publish it. That's just wrong. <laughs> so I play Ghostbusters, like forever trying to finish that game and trying to climb the stupid staircase at the end when the book ghosts would kill you, and... 
you know, I wasn't able to do it and it was really, really lame and boring. But that was probably a problem with me because, you know, it's Ghostbusters. How can it be bad? Uh, you were the total opposite of who I was as a kid. I would blame the machine for everything. Really? Oh, yeah. It was always the machine's fault. The machine cheated. The machine had it in for me. The machine. <laughs> uh, yes. I blame the machine sometimes, you know, when you eat, you're jumping and you're like, oh, that thing didn't touch me. It's like, come on, you're cheating. Yeah. But, you know, if the game in general was bad, like, the game can't be bad. Nintendo wouldn't publish something that's bad. So it's <laughs> probably my fault. I was young and naive back then. But, uh, yeah, so what about graphics? You know what? I'm not a difficult guy for graphics. Um, I like the cutesy stuff because it's easier with 8-bit than, yeah. than, you know, the, the more realistic stuff. But that's pretty – I'm not really bothered by graphics. How about you? I like I like the easy stuff, too, the, the, you know, stuff that can easily be represented. Like you take, again, The Legend of Zelda. You know what everything looks like because it's, you know, it's very simple. It's a tree. Okay, it kind of looks like a tree. It's very simple. It's just a green circle. And a brown thing that comes down from it, and you know, it's a trait. But then they tried to do like too, they become too sophisticated in eight bits, and they tried to add too many colors and too many textures. And you're like, what the hell am I looking at? This, you know, is this? You couldn't tell what you were looking at, and that just became bad for me. It's like you know, you don't have the capability. Just keep it simple. Can you give an example of a game? Die Hard, where he's. He's showing these things on the screen, and you're like, "What are we looking at? What is this thing? It's it's ridiculous." And even the main character, you know, as he's walking around, it, it just looks like he has one leg that's going from one side to the other because they didn't have the graphics to show somebody walking properly. And it, it looks ridiculous, and that just kind of kills it for me. That's right. I think uh, Super Mario Brothers was sort of a genius that way, where they just represented things that were easy to represent on eight bit, even if it doesn't make sense, like. The bonus is a mushroom, and I get the feeling that the bonus is a mushroom because a mushroom was easy to draw <laughs> with the 8-bit yeah. system. You know, the guy looks like a plumber because it was easy to draw it that yeah. way. Yeah, he, he has a mustache and a mouth because mouths were impossible. And mustaches, it's a nice, you know, feature that he can easily see and a big nose as well. Mm. And, you know, a plumber that, you know, grabs gold coins and is like, what the... That makes... Okay. With the coins, it's easy. It's just a, a circle. So there you go. Pick up coins. It's nice. Mm. Uh, fireballs. Very easy to, you know, it's not a gun. It's a fireball. Just, you know, bouncing around. It's very easy to, to, to animate. So I guess. And... Yeah, I really do get the feeling that he just went like, whatever is easy to draw, that's what we're putting there. Yeah. <laughs> and that's when the thing makes absolutely no <laughs> effing sense. <laughs> Come on. A princess that's kidnapped by giant evil turtles. How much less more sense you know whatever <laughs> and you know that bowser has a shell because it was too complicated to make wings possibly yeah he's a dragon with a shell because it's just too complicated otherwise yes that makes sense now <laughs> they did add spikes on the shell though so that was <clears throat> special <laughs> that is true they did <laughs> and a dog on a cloud <laughs> so what is that Dog and a clown with a fishing pole. Yes. Uh, At any rate. All right, let's get to it. We'll go to uh, the underrated movie. Uh, not movies, video games. Uh, yeah, go. you start. All right. My first one, uh, very controversial because a bunch of people hate it, but uh, Zelda 2, The Adventure of Link, is a game I love. It's a little classic uh, from the Nintendo Entertainment System that got such a bad rap that I don't get why. And... They tried something different and they made it like a two dimensional, like kind of like a platformer instead of making it like overhead, like Legend of Zelda. But it's a very good game with, you know, nice puzzles to, to, to solve, fun adventure. And it's, it's really challenging. And I really, you know, it's a very fun game. And I really enjoy it. And I don't get all the hate for that game. It's, it's weird to me. Yeah, I like it as well. I mean, uh, granted, I've actually played it before I played the original Zelda. So I didn't come in with a bag of expectations. But it sort of had expectations, though, because people say, well, all Legend of Zelda games are overhead. Well, at that time, there was only two, and 50% of them were overhead, and the other 50% were, like, <laughs> platformers. So you have nothing to really mention about that. There's that, too. Yeah. And for, yeah, and for me, there was, like, zero, because I had no idea what Legend of Zelda was. It was when I played Link's Adventure, and, yeah, no, it's a fine game. It is hard. Yeah. Like, it, it is a punishing game. It is. It is. And and and, punny, and it also tests your patience because going to those villages and talking to people for God only knows what reason is so annoying. 
Well, it, that's basically you get clues to solve the puzzles. Basically, it, it helps you a little bit. It's not it's not the greatest puzzles, but you know, if you're having trouble with something, you just go to the village and oh, that's what I should have done. Yeah, yeah, no, absolutely. But it's just that like f- out of four houses, three of them has have complete nonsense to tell yeah, you, and that's, that's a true. little bit annoying. Yeah, it's like. Why do I have to go into houses to talk to people? Why can't I kill them? Like, all of that was just sort of... This was not working for me at all. Yeah, that's one part of the change, you know. I would have changed it so that you get higher levels. You get higher levels. Um, you get your magic automatically, so you don't have to go, you know. Or, you know, it's obvious. You go to a town, the first house is the guy that gives you magic, and he tells you what you need to do. You don't have to go to all these 15 houses and talk to all these useless people. Just, you know, the town part is the part that I don't really like. I like killing stuff, but, you know, the mechanics of killing stuff and, you know, how it works, I, I really like. Hmm. Uh, but having said that, like, I like the battle mechanic. Like, the 2D battle mechanic with your shield and up and down to to uh, to block, depending on where the enemy is striking. Like, I actually yeah. think that's a good, fun mechanic to play. And in. enemies doing the same as well, so it's really, yeah. like, a really good sword fight with them, unless you use that cheap trick of jumping, but we're not going to talk about that. <laughs> <laughs> It's really fun, and, ch- and and if you like a challenge, like people complain these days, games are too easy. They're too, you know, it's too I simple. <laughs> but you know, some people do. So you know, go back to the, these old games like that, and you know, be challenged a little bit. You will like that. So it, it's a hard game, but I really like it. You know, you level up, you become stronger. You you, you know, you take less damage. You, you know, your magic becomes more efficient. You hit harder as you level up, and you know, the the the, dun- the castles are a bunch of puzzles that were pretty good for back then. It's a game I still like to pop in my Nintendo. That's still working, by the way. And I still like to play it. It's it's a really fun game for me. I don't know why it gets all that hate. It's... Yeah, absolutely. That's a good pick. Um, mine is also a Nintendo game all right. uh, from a different era. I'm actually uh, going into the GameCube era. Cool. And uh, I am talking about Luigi's Mansion. Okay. Uh, spin-off of the Mario series, obviously. Uh, that game got a bad reputation mostly because for being a little bit too uh, laid back as a game because essentially you're Luigi and you enter rooms and you try to uh, suck up some ghosts a la Ghostbusters, essentially. I see. And the game is really um, laid back in the sense that there, there's no real sense of tension. There's no... Uh, there's, there's there isn't that urgency of going from all the way to the right that you know Mario always yeah, had. Yeah, of course. Because you're just like, here's a room, do stuff. Here's another room, do stuff. Cool. But honestly, and I understand why people would think, well, oh, wow, that 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 lacks tension. But but that's because that's the type of game it is. Oh. Like it's a laid back game. Luigi seems like a pretty laid back dude. So you know, you know why not? Exactly. But if. If you're looking for something to just to, you know, like relax and kill the time and it has nice graphics, the jokes there are kind of funny, the gameplay is actually a lot of fun and it's clean entertainment. It's not involving entertainment, okay. but it passes the time quite nicely and it's a good time. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. I didn't, I didn't buy that because I hate Luigi, so... Oh, okay. <laughs> no, I don't know. But that's probably why they called it, you know, Luigi's Mansion and not Mario's Mansion. Because, they, you know, just to, sim- to say that it was going to be a little different than just running to the right all the way to the end, you know. Just to, to say it's going to be different. Yeah. And I, yeah, I'm i fine with different, you know, once in a while. Change is good. A little bit. So what is your uh, second? I mentioned that I think Sonic is, is a really lame franchise and completely overrated. Which is why my underrated game is going to be Sonic 3D Blast. Okay. The one that everyone hates. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah, everybody hates that game. At least uh, according to the web, everybody hates it. Uh, not that the web usually represents people. Okay. Or hopefully not. Otherwise, it, it, every DC reader is a raging bigot. But anyway. <laughs> it represents the loudest people, pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> But it, it's it's the first 3D uh, Sonic game, as you might have guessed. And I think people hate it because it's slow. It, it, it's a slow game. Like, there's no sense of speed in that game at all. Because uh, the controls, the 3D controls are a little bit too difficult for you to go fast. That seems odd for a game that's named Sonic. I know. I know. <laughs> but the game essentially involves you trying to pick up as many, uh, all the rings in the stage. It's sort of a precursor to what you'd find in, you know, Mario 64 and whatnot. You know, you, okay. you have a 3D stage, you walk around it and you try to pick up all the rings and then you can move on to the next stage and, and you jump on stuff. It, it really is a precursor to uh, Mario 64 in that way, except it's less well done because it's on the 16-bit thing, right? Yeah. But the graphics are prettier because I hate the 64 graphics. They just they just look like rocks. <laughs> Everything looks like a rock. 
Uh, but uh, I, I love that game. It's it, you have to play it slow for it to to work. Otherwise, you're you're gonna keep hitting enemies like for no reason and lose everything you've worked towards. But beyond that, man, that game was cool. <laughs> I'm guessing speed comes with you know you getting better at the game eventually. Mm. So get better, and you'll be like Sonic eventually. You'll go through level really fast. So <laughs> patience. Yeah, it's it's that's the thing. It's yeah. a game that takes patience because the first few levels, well, I, I play the entire game really slowly and I get through it. But it's sort of a relaxing game that way where I don't really <laughs> feel any pressure. Relaxing and Sonic in the same <laughs> sentence. Well, I guess you didn't say them in the same sentence, but ha <laughs> 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 Um, which leads to your second pick, I guess. It's a game, uh, not a lot of people know, it's called Ogre Battle for the Nintendo. And it's kind of like a Final Fantasy game, except instead of playing individual, you basically have an army. You make your army, you have like five people per units, and you deploy your units around, and you have to reconquer, like the evil empire has taken, it's not a great story, the evil empire is taking over, and you have to reconquer. So basically you send your units, you control you send your units, you don't control the fighting though. So it's all about strategy, where you send your units where and how they're formed. You have like healers in certain units or, you know, magic users. You send them against certain enemies to be more efficient. And and when I first played the game, I thought, well, this is easy. You know, I have my three, four good units. I'm just going to plow through all the enemies with my really strong units. And that's, you know, like you, like you did for Final Fantasy. You get really strong and then you just plow through everything. But you're part of a revolution and people don't like when you're really, really strong and you bully other people because, you know, you're really strong. They see you as kind of an invader instead of some guy that's going to free them. Mm -hmm. And you get a very bad ending if you do that. So you kind of have to be the underdog and keep your units kind of weak and the people like you and then you get good endings. You know, I was really shocked the first time uh, I, I got to somebody I, I thought was a main character and she said, yeah, I'm not joining you because you're too evil. I was like, what? I'm, I'm freeing this region. How am I too evil? And I get the bad ending that people hate me and like there's a counter-revolution after a year to get rid of me. And it's like, that's not cool. So Sounds a lot like Operation Undoing Freedom. But, I, never, never. <laughs> <laughs> but then, you, you, you know, you learn to play nicer and you, you, you listen to the tips that people say people don't like a bully, so don't be too strong. And then, you know, you your reputation you become very nice and you get good endings it's a really fun game all right uh your other uh, underrated game they, they came up with a sequel for nintendo 64 called ogre battle 64 mm -hmm. because you know it's on nintendo 64 yeah, everything it, has to be followed with 64 i know it, it makes things very yeah. confusing i learned of that game i remember on a uh, friday morning i was at work and i was you know not wanting to write a paper so just browsing and uh, I read about that game. I went to lunch, then I went to buy the game, and I only came back to work on Tuesday. <laughs> that game was so awesome. <laughs> the fun of doing research, you know, only results count, not how often you stay in the <laughs> office. <laughs> Terrible. But, um, yeah, it, it was a great game, and it's, it's the same thing. You can't be too strong because people don't like you, and it, it's, it, it's a really fun series. Hmm. Um... My uh, my my last uh, my last uh, underrated game pick is uh, is a, ga a game that was designed for the Game Boy Color and it's called Hello Kitty's Cube Frenzy, <laughs> which wow. is bloody ingenious. Have you ever played it at all? No, no. It, it, I mean, it's uh, it's usually ignored by most gamers because of the Hello Kitty theme and the very girly theme, but it is an absolutely brilliant puzzle game. Because what it is 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 it's like Tetris, okay? Except that you. you you have this sort of platform made of blocks uh, where where Hello Kitty sort of walks around and she's a dumbass. Like, she's like a lemming. Okay. And your goal when you, you have blocks dropping and you have to place them to sort of create bridges for her to get to her destination to grab as many pieces of fruit without falling off and dying. And because she's so dumb, <laughs> yeah. it makes the game really fun. And you do control her a little bit. Like when she reaches the ledge, you can press a button for her to turn around. So you have to place the blocks and always pay attention to where she is as well at the same time. Oh, it's, that's nice. It's really cool. And uh, as the pro levels progress, you have like her friends joining in on the fun, sort of like walking around her and sort of blocking her way because they're just as dumb as she is. <laughs> It's really cool, and it, it's it's sort of you always have to make sure that you know you can afford to have them fall, but like you have to make sure that at least one stays in the game to catch the final fruit. You know, 
Wow. It's really cool. It's a really ingenious and it's a completely different puzzle game. And it's, it's, I'm, and nobody paid attention to it because it's Hello Kitty, Kitty theme, but it's, it's one of the funniest puzzle games I know. Okay. Well, that's it for us, I guess. Yep. Um, and if you have any questions, comments, and underrated uh, video games, you can write us at mail at idiomatic.com or uh, post a comment uh, right below the episode at idiomatic.com. Yep. See you next week. Thank <laughs> you.